Steel Magnolias, two sisters who love family, traditions, and all things Southern. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. Hi, Lainey. Hi, Laura Beth. Well, as we close out 2020, I wanted to comment on the books that I read this year. Just really quick. Because I made a goal to read one or more books per month. Okay. Did you which hit Which is a 12? big goal for me. I have 13 books Come on the on. list. And you're talking actual rating, not audiobook, no, I, I not counted, any of that. No, I counted audiobooks. Oh, okay. Books. Yeah. Okay. So I have 13 on the list. Nine of the 13 are nonfiction. So okay. that tells you where my interests are. <laughs> um, and about half of them were Southern authors. Okay. So I don't That's just fun. stay in the South for all things entertaining. Um, but I'll just, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to. I should have made my list and I didn't. Well, you but can do okay. it later. I, as we're talking, I'm thinking, I don't I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. Um, I'll actually post these okay. on our Instagram. So if you're interested in seeing what I read this year, um, go follow us on Instagram. at Steel Magnolias Podcast. And then you can do the same, Lainey. Okay. You've got I'll some. make my list. Um, I kept one last year and I think I hit 21 or two. Like are you I did serious? Yeah, I did really well. I don't know that I did that many this year. But wow. Anyway. Well, I quit three, which I'm not even going to mention because I quit them because they were, ta- they got tacky. Well, that's real. I, I can't even tell you how many movies I start and I'm like, fantastic. Find something else. Well, but you know what's a little bit more fair about a movie is that there is a rating. And so I have often thought... It doesn't matter. PG-13s have made me blush. Okay, but it says PG-13 due to sexual content or... You know, like okay. it kind of gives you... I guess you I didn't get that far. ...some sort of reasoning why it got the... But I we I agree. A PG-13 It rating makes me maddening. Oftentimes it's mad- maddening is R to, to us. But why don't books have the same MPAA rating? Oh, that's interesting. Like, I know I they're not know. under motion pictures, but why isn't there like a book rating system not like a re- five-star review i'm talking like a based on content why isn't there some sort of anyway okay well i'm gonna make you laugh and now i've got to look up a word and don't okay. have my phone handy but anyway i was at barnes and noble just went in there for a brief amount of time to look at a couple of books because i still like to see it touch it do i want it kind of a thing forgot to look at the dolly book while i was there but anyhow <laughs> Um, Because you said it was beautiful and I wanted to see it, but I forgot to look at that one. But um, I am looking for a particular section. You know, they have them in sections. Mm -hmm. And I noticed this one aisle is so busy. Like it wasn't even a busy part of, I mean, the store wasn't real busy that particular day and time. But there was one aisle that was real busy with young people. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I had to look the word up too because I was in Barnes and Noble two weeks ago. And I it's, didn't even know what that word is. I think Ma- it's Magna. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was something to do with gaming or it's like, like anime. Japanese anime. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There was like 10 people in that aisle, none in any of the other sections I was looking for. <laughs> and so I'm like, this is the exact same like what is scenario that? I walk and then I like <laughs> do you have a section for just regional or southern authors and they looked at me like um there's like a travel section I was like come on I know right <laughs> well we do live similar lives even though we're in different well, circles a lot but what I wanted to mention just in case people don't know about it this helped me get access to more books this year is that Libby don't tell everybody <laughs> no I'm just kidding well that's true I'm just kidding but no, we, we want need, our listeners we need to, to share know. it so there's a Libby L-I-B-B-Y app that allows you and there are others but that's the one that you introduced me to yeah it allows you to check out audiobooks from your library with your or library e-books card from your yeah from your local Amazing. library so that, I'm, I've got three things on hold right now and they're like two months, six months, yeah. you know, and that's the only reason I'm jokingly saying we don't want to tell everybody. Right. But. Yeah. There was a couple on my quit list that I'm even more kind of frustrated about because I waited like 15 weeks and then you're like, it's here. And, and then, then, but you know what else deflate. is good about, yeah. You know what else is good about, I find listening to the book is you see how much time you've put into it. So if it's trashy. You're like, I've put three hours into listening to this. I'm done. Yeah, I'm not going to put 12. Yeah. If I've already done three and it's, yeah. 
Like I have totally ten, care. I have ten more hours of yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't seem to be getting I'm better. Out. Yeah. yeah. That just helps me for some reason. Yeah. Because time is valuable. Time so. is so valuable. Anyway, yeah, look for we'll do that offline or on Instagram. I okay. mean I'll um, make my list. We'll do too. our twenty twenty. We'll have some parallels. Book review. Well, this is our last show of season two. <gasps> We, yes. So we're going to take a very much needed Christmas break. We'll be back in January with an all new season. That'll be season three. Tons of exciting things ahead. Well, I wanted to ask you, I had a lot of fun on season two launching with listener questions. Oh, okay. And that was a really popular episode. So I'm just going to maybe put it out there. Let's do it. If we get some listener Let's questions enough to make an episode, I think we should launch with that. Okay. So if you have listener questions questions um it could be anything like obviously keep it southern related but you know podcast related uh, go back to old episodes if you had a question anything really yeah. um send us an email I'll put the link in the show notes or facebook message us or instagram message us and so. you said southern related but that also overlaps into entertainment related or that kind of thing remember we had somebody that wanted us to go over setting up a guest room Yes. So, I mean, that's hospitality. It's not yeah, yeah. Southern per se. Yeah. But um, I had fun doing that little, re- doing that episode. But I would guess that people would, that would write us are kind of familiar with our show. True. So, yeah. yeah if it's something that fits, we've talked about too, and you want more of or something. Well, anyway, that's fun. Putting that out there for y'all. Well, I've had this um, topic on my radar for a long time. Yes, you in have. In my running list. Yes, you have. But tis the season for... Um, it's cold weather and it's, uh, typically a time when you're opening your door to lots of people, maybe not so much this year. Typically. (laughs) Yeah. So we're talking milk punch and eggnog and I wanted to throw in wassail, but that doesn't fit because it's served hot. Yeah. And we're talking about cold punches and they, they very much are sister sort they, of drinks they, to one, a lot of beverages overlap. to one yeah. another um so if you want to hear even more like holiday hosting tips or other sort of christmas I don't know, entertaining punches <laughs> or other things we did do a holiday hosting episode in season one it was episode 52 just remember it was pre-covid so i don't even know what we said what on that we? episode but just know we weren't Everybody gather around your punch bowl and dip in at the same right. time. <laughs> Hang a mistletoe, you know, like, <laughs> just give us grace in knowing that that was, the yeah. con- that was not a context of where we're at today. So, um, okay, let's well, dive in. There's lots of things, directions we can go. You want to start eggnog? Sure. Okay. Do you have, well, I think it's funny when you think about eggno- eggnog because, People love it or hate it. Like it's just very divisive. As, as I've as <laughs> I've so just true. said that somebody just paused. Gag. And, they're and, like gag, or they're um, fast forwarding till we get to milk punch. I don't know. Or, yeah, um, or they're just they're out. So we know that. Um, I put a question up on a Southern cooking group that I'm in on Facebook about like just eggnog recipes or kind of tips okay. on making eggnog, and I felt like it raised more questions than answers as I was reading through. So I say all that to say eggnog is sounds simple and it's quite complex. And there's lots of different ways people do it and things like that. So I'm not by any stretch of the imagination an eggnog expert, but I do love it. I love it. I've never made it. things that I feel like, um, I have to be very mindful of because it is so high in calories <laughs> that I can't buy it to have around for the whole month. Right. It's like get some for the Christmas Eve. You know what I mean? Right. Like I need it one half gallon only in the yes. house. Yes. Agree. Because it's just so good. Yeah. And so desserty. I mean, it's, it's basically <laughs> like I, I got tickled thinking it's basically almost like a milkshake that's melted mm-hmm. and I'm just drinking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the glass doesn't need to be too, too large. Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. Anyway, Well, so we do need to just acknowledge the fact that as the name mentions, it has eggs in it. Raw eggs. So one of the comments that I had on this Facebook question, someone said, well, look at recipes online where the eggs are tempered, which is like pasteurization. Okay. 
So this com- they said this combined with the alcohol will make the eggnog safe to drink. I think just the alcohol alone makes it pretty safe, personally. So even if you are undecided, which I don't think you are, about eggnog, now I've really got your attention because you're wondering now, is eggnog not safe to drink? I mean, I guess you have to address the fact that there can be salmonella in raw eggs. But if you, depending on like where you get these eggs and like if you are including alcohol in your eggnog, that's going to kill a lot more Yeah. than if you don't. Yeah. Eggnog doesn't have to have alcohol in it to be called eggnog. Yeah. But... I did find a funny little quote from Eudora Welty, who's a oh, going to mention her too. Southern author. Yeah. Did you see that same quote? I don't know. I just thought it was funny. She was once asked whether it was fitting to serve her signature eggnog recipe without the whiskey, to which she replied, "A bird can't fly on just one wing." Oh my gosh! I just yes, that was cute. That's amazing. Okay, well, since you're on Eudora, well, let me I'll, let me talk to, about her in just a second. So I just wanted to say that, like. If you are buying eggs in this country, in the USA, they've been through a pasteurized process that gets them through, like, the USDA food safety regulations. So you should be fine. If you're getting them from your backyard chickens, they're probably even safer than the ones that we're getting at the grocery. (laughs) Yeah. So if you are, like, if you are pregnant or you are very elderly. I've seen some footnotes. I'm being honest okay. of like, consult your doctor, avoid okay. this, you know, they so I'm not being, I'm not trying to be funny about it. There is some legitimacy to it, but I also was just kind of cracking up that there, there was a lot of chatter about like, is eggnog even safe to drink? Oh so. my goodness. Okay. Anyway. Um, but Eudora Welty's recipe comes from her mother. Oh, and her mother's name was Chestine, I think. Um, oh, gosh. Get my notes straight here. Um, yeah. Okay. So, she, you know, she's a Pulitzer Prize winning Southern author, yes. if people don't know who she is. Um, but, she, yes, she has famously shared her recipe that she inherited from her mother, Chestina, who in turn, her mother, gives credit to Charles Dickens. What? So I'm going to show you a picture right now because I'm going to post this on our Instagram. This is so fun. Right now. I love it. Okay. I'm looking at it here. Okay. That is. Charles Dickens recipe. That is Eudora's handwriting. That is precious. Of her mother's recipe. So I'm going to post so that on precious. our Instagram this week. But I mean, if y'all want to make eggnog that comes from the kitchen of Charles Dick- Dickens, that's pretty amazing. We'll be posting that. Absolutely. I think this is so adorable how it's written in her handwriting too. Yeah. Well, um, gosh, I don't even know where to start. Well, we've started. Okay. So, um, (laughs) okay. So we've talked about the fact that eggnog is raw eggs. So if you are just on the sort of a high level, just know that eggnog in theory shouldn't be cooked. Right. Right. There, we'll get d- down the road into later what it I means. I think one reason that this is also popular at Christmas too is most of these recipes make big batches. Yeah. So this is something that's really easy to serve out of a pitcher or a punch bowl. Yes. You know, for a yes. big group. Yeah. Um, I think that's one reason that this got so popular. Yeah. Um, so, and- yeah. So other recipe wise, besides the one that we just mentioned, yes. which sounds like it's the first one we should all try if it's and from it Charles similar Dickens. similar to the one that I have here too. Um, but Martha Stewart has a very popular one too. And I saw a lot of people mention that they use hers. They like if hers. they make okay. hers is very boozy. Not a southerner. Hers but... is very boozy. <laughs> okay. So for me personally, I think that if you had Maker's Mark um, or so any, or any bourbon, bourbon, um, bourbon, dark rum and, and cognac. Oh, yeah. cognac. Okay. Sometimes you'll see brandy. That's um, a lot. So yeah, I feel like that's really alcohol. starting to take away from, from the creaminess. Yeah. Of the, yeah. That's like a different drink to me. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, the recipe that I was hoping to make for us today, but didn't get to, sorry. It happens. Um, it's it happens. December. <laughs> <laughs> um, Looks kind of similar to hers, uh, Eudora Welties, but is a bigger batch. Okay. 
Um, it's just got bourbon. Okay. Or said whiskey. Yes. But it's also got the powdered sugar and okay. um, whipping cream and yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Anyway, I do think another thing that's really important with a drink like this is I love fresh nutmeg when it's like just grated. Mm-hmm. And you can even just do that with like a little zester or something. Like yes. A little, you know, just buy the nutmeg hole and do yeah. that on the top, each yeah. little glass. Yes. Yum. Yeah. Make that fresh presentation and we did say that this serves large batches primarily you'll see i mean a lot of the recipes i was saying are like five gallons i mean large and but we're saying this in this context here because southerners tweak your southerners like to host but if you're not hosting this year fair enough yeah scale it way back though and sometimes that's hard to tweak if it's a five gallon recipe and you're making it for a family of four but yeah you can figure it out but another thing is this will stay in the refrigerator yes where if somebody pops over for you know a little visit you would have it ready yeah to serve yeah another thing I was thinking about that I can see why this would have become popular is think about in you know the 1800s when they were on farms they had chickens they had cows Mm -hmm. so you've got the dairy products you need you've got the eggs you've got the cream what are we going to do with all this stuff yeah you know yeah we can make a fresh batch of eggnog i can totally see how that became popular and i know here in the states um both george washington and dwight eisenhower were big fans of eggnog oh, cool. kind of known fans and the washingtons apparently served it all winter at mount vernon like they're kind of known wow. for okay associated with eggnog yeah but december is national eggnog month oh i didn't know that okay and christmas eve is national eggnog day because <laughs> you know we have national everything now That's right. <laughs> so prime time to be talking about this so i mean we just need to make a point to say the things that you need to make this are a lot of dairy products and time you yes need, you need eggs you need milk you need cream yes and, and it need- usually needs to rest overnight yes so don't think you're going to make this at 2 p.m. for your evening gathering yes like you need to make it the night before so it can sit that's right but if you are dairy free there are options for you Ooh, good point um i know that that company almond breeze that does almond milk they make an almond milk eggnog oh my god is it good i don't know i haven't had it my friend kaylee who is dairy free has used some of these yeah and i know silk she said silk makes one okay I think even lactate makes one for wow. lactose intolerance. So there is options. I'm not saying that they're exactly the you know right. how they how they taste, but there's options. There's also keto friendly um, wow. versions, and there's even um, already boozed up done eggnog. Evan Williams makes uh, same as their mm-hmm. um, you know in the liquor store you would purchase. Um, already done eggnog that already has the Evan Williams in it. Was you, We saw that. We did. Was it? Yeah. And was I've it, had it before, but it's been a while. And I remember thinking it was good. I don't know that I would say it was great. But, but it wasn't cold. Well, it wasn't open yet either. So, so it was just, okay to have on the shelf. Interesting. Yeah. I'm telling you the alcohol and that sealing process. I'm, it's yeah. fine. Okay. Um, But yeah, there's... No shame in that if you want to just pick it up. Exactly. Or if you can't have all the eggs and dairy. I've heard that Trader Joe's does a really good already done up eggnog. That's not going to have the alcohol no okay. already included. So you would but then. From a brand already done that. up standpoint, I've heard okay. theirs is really good okay. too. Um, but I, so if you want a cooked version, we need to just at least mention that's not eggnog. But that's, it's not even boiled custard. Boiled custard isn't boiled, but I, I guess it is cooked. Well, but it's considered cooked. Okay. So that, you know, I went on this whole trail. I just remember research. thinking boiled custard isn't boiled. So where'd that name came, come from? But I guess there is a cooking process or a, do they curdle? I don't know. Well, it's Southern. I mean, it is a longstanding Southern tradition. Damon Lee Fowler, he's a culinary historian. Did you mention culinary we, historians? Yes, I, yes. I'll um, tell my he, fact in he, a moment. <laughs> he indicates that boiled custard has been a staple in Southern kitch- kitchens almost since the first boat landed in Jamestown in How 1607. Funny. So again, the most basic difference is that boiled custard is heated while true eggnog isn't. They're both made with milk, half and half are cream, egg, sugar, and usually some vanilla. Or, yeah. Um, but... 
Eggnog's going to be very fluid and creamy because it hasn't heated. Custard gets thicker as it heats. Yuck. That doesn't sound good to me. And as the eggs are cooking. Okay. So. Okay. But then I think, isn't boiled custard, is it served warm or is it served cold also? Like you've now refrigerated it. Do you know? Good question. I feel like it's more like a room temperature. Okay. So it's whole milk, eggs, white sugar, and vanilla. Well, I had read that another culinary historian, Andrew F. Smith, he says that historically eggnog in this country is a Southern drink. Really? So, I mean, I know I've heard of eggnog in other yeah. parts of the country, but that's what he says, which also led me to the question, just to be funny, is how do you become a culinary historian? Because I want to be one. No, That's a great title. I know. I'm like, um, yeah. I mean, we're kind of doing that already because we, we give are. a lot of background on food. And so, you know, if you want to call Laura yourself. Beth Peters, culinary historian. It's got a nice ring to it for it totally sure. does. Yeah. So we're not really saying that eggnog and boiled custard originated here in the south no i think it's always it's european european you know like i think i've seen the isle of iona for eggnog and then i've seen just england for right. eggnog i don't know we're just the saying exact where we're the ones keeping it alive down here that's all <laughs> we're, we're 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 keeping it going and we do love to bring you know we're came from that area yeah M- many of our immigrants yes. did so of course we have some of those traditions yeah um, anything else you'd say on eggnog? Just that it's, I want some. I know. Now I want some. I want I Dora was, Welty to you know, sit here and have some with that, me. That's that would, all I want. That would be the ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> um, I, I was thinking even, I know we didn't get a chance to make it, but I would love to have done a taste test. Yeah. That would have been cool. That would have been so much work though. Like remember how we did the hot sauces? Yeah. That was a little easier of an investment to make because we were just buying little hot sauces, which aren't that expensive. And eggnog tasting would have been a lot more pricey, but it sure would have been fun. Yeah. Anyway. Well. Anyway. Yeah. Maybe a Christmas 2021 event with our listeners. We do um, something with various milk punches <laughs> and, and egg extravaganza eggnog <laughs> events i see what you did there um so milk punch although using I... your nog and... <laughs> oh my gosh this is definitely our last episode of the year <laughs> so milk punch seems a little more my speed even though i know i love eggnog I, I think I might like milk punch better, but I haven't had it. To because no raw say eggs. That. Yes. You just want the creamy, boozy, but not the eggs. Yeah. Do the eggs freak you out a little bit? After they re- don't freak me out. After reading all these people, they've bothered me with all their oh gosh, well un- pasteurized comments. So <laughs> they're unpasteurized <laughs> that's comments. The word. Um, you know, Southern Living this month mentioned milk punch. So again, I felt so validated in us already having this content Same. on our calendar. No, what's what? Their theirs was funny because they have one called the Triple B. Triple B is in boy. Okay. Milk punch. And they call it that because it's bourbon, brandy, and buttermilk as the oh my requirements. Gosh. This thing is thick. Um, well, this is definitely renowned in new orleans i mean it's on a lot of menus in new orleans yeah. i yeah. mean even i don't know about year round definitely all winter but all times of day like i for some reason think of eggnog as like just like i would a white russian like an evening yes. end of the day situation yes a i can't cap. imagine having a drink like that in the middle of the day but i guess milk punch may be a little lighter yeah because of the not yeah. having the eggs yeah anyhow carry on i was just throwing in my two cents again this would be like big batch cocktail um i don't have you heard of milk punch made without the alcohol because we mentioned with eggnog it's it's, always okay not alcohol okay so i wanted to make you could do either but milk punch always has alcohol yeah okay and i I think it always has um you see sometimes brandy sometimes bourbon yes and rum yes this Southern Living recipe didn't have rum, but, okay. um, but yeah, I've seen rum in a lot. And again, garnishes are everything, right? Yes. So cinnamon and fresh nutmeg and cute little, the right little glass. Yeah. No glasses. We've said that before. Glasses yes, matter. They do. So what sort of glass would you, 
think this works in like a short one with a little handle glass yes or even like a little irish coffee glass would be cute yes. you know what i'm talking about yes. it has a little stand but yeah. not real real big yeah. that would be good for something like that yeah. too yeah something that you're not touching right because it's cold yeah. and it's a cold season yeah. so you don't want right. to be having your hand on it so um one of the reasons new orleans was um known for milk punch early on right was because they were a seaport, mm -hmm. there was, um, ice was readily available. It would come in by ship. Oh my gosh. You know, yes. think about in things we don't have to think about in this day and age. Right. Um, so my, ice is a major component in this milk punch. Yes. And so they could do milk punch there. That's come up on the podcast before as well. It ice. Has. It <laughs> matters. It matters. And, it and seaports got more things like that than Wow. If you're not coastal, that you don't get so all much of that sense. stuff. But um, for our listeners who are faithful and already making simple syrups for their different drinks that they're making, um, if you have simple syrup, bourbon, vanilla extract, and whole milk or half and half, you're almost there at making this. Mm -hmm. That's true. You just need a little rum. Um, if Well, it depends on your recipe. You might not even need that, but yeah. most of them have rum. Yeah. So anyway, this might be something you might... Want to this look is up the, the recipe one I'm going to try. Whip through. I'm going to try making this because I want less ingredients on hand that I don't need for other things. Of course, it's December. I need all this stuff, don't well, I? Well, and I'm thinking if you were to get the eggs, um, if you don't... Eggs or eggs. Eggs or eggs. Eggs, get, eggs like, are going to get eaten in my I house. I always use, go th whip through some eggs. That's so true. Well, um, well, maybe you make the milk punch, I make the eggnog, and we do our own little tasting okay. comparison. Okay. And I think, again, I can't stress it enough. Look at what the serving sizes are, the serving quantities on your recipes that you're looking at. Because I'm seeing it all over the place. I'm seeing serves five and serves five gallons. Yeah, I know the recipe I was going to make with the eggnog called for 12 eggs. And Eudora Welty's is six. Um, right. You do separate the yellow and the white in the, yeah. when you're making it. but. Maybe I need to start with just six and see. I would. I really want that much around because I just true. said I can't. It's so good. I don't need a whole huge batch yeah. here. I could take that to our um, church event <laughs> and be like, here you go. <laughs> the women's brunch. Yeah. Um, well, we have a couple of recipes that we'll post. Um, I can't put like a gold star by any of them. Because we their are own. not experts at making these yet. Yeah. yeah. But. Um, but yeah, we'll put put links in the show notes. So festive. Just a fun thing to try. Absolutely. And I can't close out the Christmas episode without acknowledging something Christmassy. So I was listening to um, a pastor the other day and he was talking about, he did some research on what the most theologically sound Christmas carol or Christmas song is okay this is fascinating to me because there's a, a lot, lot of our listeners don't know that i'm a licensed minister oh that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm really into theology y'all might that might surprise you but i love so studying this so what song did he think was the most theologically sound so he said hark the herald angels sing and okay. i looked through the lyrics and you know ugh, there's so many good lines i mean God and sinners reconciled. Yeah. That line is, oh, that's yeah. what he came for, y'all. Yeah. Um, just, you know, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, hail thy incarnate deity. I mean, I, I, of oh course, I love gosh. the way this is like written from yes. 17 something. Um, but yeah, I just thought, you wow. know, we we listen to songs and there's all these Christmas albums coming out they're they're fun but i just wanted to encourage everybody to listen to some of these old ones that are yeah. tried and true yeah we talked about um anything else on that no, one there's just so many good lines yeah. yeah i may play that after this just to listen to it again afresh oh born that man no more may die born to raise the son of earth born to give them second birth i mean mm. just so good yes it is theologically sound it is <laughs> wow well, I remember talking on the podcast before, um, several years ago, me reading that Joy to the World yes. was written about Christ's second coming, not his first coming. So interesting. And it totally blew me away and had me weeping, just thinking about 
heaven and earth's response to when he comes again. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Like amazing. Yeah. Because I heard someone else talking about like we're in Advent season right now, which are the four, you know, celebrated the four Sundays leading up to Christmas, but it's really this whole like anticipation month of preparation and anticipation of his coming. Um, and so they were saying we are living between two Advents. Oh, right. So good. Yes. Like the Advent for Jesus to come has happened like they prepared yeah their they hearts. had been a long awaiting their messiah and now and so that has already happened here on earth and now there's this other expectation of jesus returning back and so we're in another uh, the second advent so it's so just cool yeah it was kind of interesting to think about living between those two advents yes but. well there's just so much beauty in those scriptures that we read this time of year mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. But there's just different things that because it's alive that it that the Lord can show us in rereading those things and re listening to these old songs. Gosh, yeah. so good. I feel like every Christmas when I'm in some sort of a service some lyric jumps jumps out. out. Yeah. Like I remember last year, um, it was his law is love and his gospel is peace. Mm -hmm. Um, so that one stood out to me. Um, as long as I... mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is that from? Oh my gosh. Duh. It's Oh Holy Night. Hello. Oh man. Like, that one. When the glory falls. <laughs> Seriously. And for some reason, I much prefer to hear a female sing that song. Me too. There's something about that song that is, needs to be female. Because it sounds angelic. And I know Josh Groban does it well. Like somebody's going to be saying that right now. But it's <laughs> something about a female. Faith Hill can tear that one up too. I think it's her. that. But that. Or is it Martina? Maybe it's Martina. There's some country female yeah. that I really liked the version. Um, but I love the line in that song that says. Um, in Oh Holy Night. Yes, in O Holy Night, where it says, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Mm, that's good. We didn't have any worth, but I mean, we yeah. just, in sin and error pining, we're just pining for, so true. you know, and then he comes and we have worth again. Oh man. it's a good word, sis. So good. Well. Hope that you all soul ponder feels some of its those. worth. Yes. Yes. Mm. Well, it's so good. I I just so for our listeners, chew on the lyrics of these tunes because they're so good. Who transitions from Milk Punch to Christmas hymns? We do. We do. <laughs> okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. May peace, the Prince of Peace, be with y'all. Yes. Amen. <laughs>